Welcome. This is a July 2nd Jalen Zones production user call. We have Jan, myself, Jamie, Dan, and we, we're just kind of taking it easy today. Uh, Jan's been tinker, tinkering with EHCPCD, and uh, I look forward to future news on that. And uh, Jamie, it sounds like you've hit an issue with jail descriptors. What have you found? Yes. So I'm looking into uh, KQ notifications, which is one of the uh, main points of all this. And I hit a problem with an analog to um, process KQ is that you can be notified when the process forks and you can track children and they are automatically added to your KQ notification. Um, with the jails, there's there's a bit of an issue with the processes. It's all done through process ID. And so you, you uh, get a notification of a new process and it says, here is my ID and my parent ID. And when you fork, it says, here is the, um, the process ID of the child process. But with jails, we're trying to do it through the descriptors and not through the JIDs, which have this um, race condition problem of getting a JID and then trying to refer to the jail. But I cannot give a file descriptor with KQ. I could give I could give the jail ID of the new jail. And there will still be that bit of a race as you say, okay, I'm going to go get the jail by ID there. But I cannot give a descriptor because KQ operates on file descriptors itself, meaning it is not tied to a particular process. When you say notify KQ, you say notify all things that are on this KQ descriptor not in not notify this process of its kq descriptors so i cannot attach a uh, a new jail descriptor to the process because i don't know what process i may be wanting to attach it to that makes total sense that that's impossible so we end up being left with this problem then where even though we can create jail descriptors and access those jails seamlessly at that point, we cannot seamlessly collect their children through KQ without some of that race, race condition. And I was wondering if anybody had some ideas to how to bypass this problem. I have an idea. Okay. And that is that you uh, just basically have an event similar to node exited or node fork which tells you that this happened and then the consumer is responsible for using an ioctal, for example, on the existing jail descriptor to uh, consume a child. And that event, the NKQ is level triggered as long as there's at least one child which has not been consumed. And or if so that's too I... hard, you could say... Uh, the API contract is a little bit less neat and user space must just try as long as that basically any time a child is created, you get a wake up and you must just spin and consume the uh, event until there are no more new ch children to uh, attach to. Okay, uh, so the, the first one the idea I, would be uh, that inside the, the jail descriptor uh, or inside the just, just yeah inside the jail descriptor you would have a queue basically of unconsumed children in your own and if you want to track the jail multiple times you would have to somehow dub, do a deep copy so that you get your, your new queue so if you talk and then share a file descriptor unless you want to so that the kernel is not forced to uh, basically keep a allocation per um, per process using that file descriptor. Uh, so yeah, 
it would probably easiest to just say, don't do that. So don't yeah. uh, fork and expect to consume the notification in both processes. And I don't think that's a limitation, which is going to be a problem for because I can't foresee a use case where you would do that intentionally. I would expect it's more like KQ, which also does, does not survive an exec. So you can't keep your uh, KQ descriptor open through the through exec because the file descriptors will make no sense and so on. Uh, so yeah, you can't yeah. unless you try really hard. Yeah, okay, with R fork you can kind of shoot right. yourself in the foot, but um, I don't see a need where I can't, I just, at the top of my head, I can't come up with a use case where you would do that intentionally and be restricted. As so long as there is a could... way to intentionally perform a deep copy of the gel descriptor so that you can have the, uh, because normally if you just dupe it, you get a new entry in your file descriptor table uh, of your process and not a full copy. So there needs to be a way to do a deep copy so that you can give that to someone else, for example, for socket passing, because then they probably want the notification. But I think it's okay to make it an explicit step to duplicate the jail descriptor. So that you have a kind of clone. Um, okay. Because you can't, so, because they're not part of the file system namespace unless you map them somewhere under slash dev, you can't just open them again. Yeah, you would. Uh, and you don't know what happens when you go through slash def fd, uh, fd number with open because of the mount flag. There's like three mount flag which change what happens. Or oh, two of them are significant the no dub and the lin proc fs1. Uh, so, and the read uh, sum link. So, yeah, a sum link wouldn't work if that's the mount, uh, mode of slash def fd the device file descriptor file system, the no dup may work depending on how you implement it, but you can't, or you at least this feature should not force the user into uh, mounting the device file system with specific mount options. So yeah, the yeah, only I way I can think- with the file paths. Exactly. So the only way I can think of to make it is that you can have a, like an I to get a new jail descriptor for the same jail so that you have your own uh, queue head for an event notifications by the jail. Are you, you uh, How are the jail descriptors tied to the jail? Did you do that manually or were through this kernel object event framework we have? Uh, right now, a I have a jail has a list of descriptors. So when you get a jail descriptor, you uh, you add to the jails list of descriptors. And when mm -hmm. there is an event to be notified, currently each jail descriptor has its own uh, K event select queue mm -hmm. rather than the jail having it. I was thinking of moving it into the jail, but it sounds like in this case, I might want to keep it in the jail descriptor. Yeah, the it is the descriptor which is added to KQ. You will get an you will have to account for that uh, multiplicity mismatch if you do put the filter state into the jail. But the jail should probably have a list of descriptors referencing it. Yes, that's that's what it currently has, and probably a counter as well. So that it does not have to search roots. So, um, or you could just say, okay, I only care if it's empty or not. So yeah, I so far I've only cared if it's empty. Yeah. And usually I don't even uh, care about that. Most things I that have that What's... I've done with them so far it just goes through the list, and if it's empty, then going through the list is a no op. There's a few what, cases what, where I might want to lock first, and then I'll check if it's empty. Because I foresee it would be quite useful to have the mode for jail descriptors. They're closing the jail descriptor, uh, destroys the jail, 
so that if your process dies, even with a sick kill, the colonel will clean up the jail for you. Yeah, and I haven't added that in yet, but I do have the plan for making jail scriptures optionally that way. Yeah, it should be uh, opt in or opt out. Uh, it should not be mandatory to have that. Similar to a process descriptor, which by default, the lifetime of the descriptor uh, is a bound on the um, lifetime of a process. So when you close the last reference to the uh, process descriptor, um, it gets uh, sick killed, I think, which makes sense because that's not a clean shutdown, but basically my supervisor died. I should uh, share its fate. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then uh, the kernel just does a uh, quick and dirty rough uh, cleanup. So it what may make is... sense to have even a flag to make a file descriptor basically supervision uh, so or basically make it not count of that so that you have two cues, one of basically controlling uh, jail descriptors and one of observational only or so, so that you can have a descriptor which does not extend the lifetime. So for example, if you just want to run an interactive command or something, you may not, or some a thing like a monitoring system, which is just supposed to observe the system without changing its behavior. It may make even sense to just have that in there and it shouldn't be much code you would just use two lists instead of one do i even need two lists do i just right now i have one list and i was thinking i could just have a flag on the descriptor saying this is yeah, an owning descriptor. but if you do that you can do that but if you do you have to scan the list find out if so then you have to do a linear operation uh Whereas if you have two lists split up, you can just check if the list is empty. Oh, so the idea is if you have two, if you have multiple owning descriptors, they all have to be closed for the jail to go away? Yes. Okay. That's the idea. So that the reference count, the jail has to be not referenced by any of the controlling, owning, whatever terminology makes sense. It's probably good idea before the thing truly hits the tree to have a little notepad somewhere with just the terminology so that it's consistent and fits together. Actually, the one way to um, make this is without having to introduce a separate flag is jails already have reference count and persist. And if you make a jail that is not persistent, but well, even still, yeah, that descriptor the would have a reference count. The problem is that in that case, wouldn't. it's not a property of the descriptor, but of the jail. Right, and we do want a property of the descriptor is that some descriptors would hold open a reference. The, the observing descriptors would not hold open a reference count, but the owning yep. descriptors would. Yep, that, in my opinion, makes sense. And then, because it sounds like you want the ability from the patch I've seen, to break that so that the jail can be destroyed and the file descriptor then goes into a kind of faulted state similar to a revoked file descriptor. Yeah. I'm still not getting quite what I'm supposed to do uh, then with the fork. So with the fork, I give a notification. So then the jail creates a child. Let him jail. finish. Let him finish. With the fork, I get a notification that there is a child and that child is put on some some list in the jail descriptor so then i do some operation on the descriptor to say what was that child and it pulls the uh first unconsumed child off off of that queue so my idea is that if a jail creates a child jail mm -hmm. um inside the kernel you would go to the present track then loop over all file descriptors uh, for that jail and enqueue the prison to the, uh, the new, new child, similar to how you would uh, enqueue a zombie. 
and then you get the equivalent of a sick child just through KQ as an event. You have to drain and it's level triggered by default until you've consumed them all. Um, and then you uh, get to consume the Q entries, for example, with an ioctal on the um, file descriptor to uh, get the new uh, gel descriptor for the child gel. And the advantage is that it's not a problem that the KQ filter is global and not bound to any process because all you're doing is you're basically broadcasting the there is an event consu to consume message and then the consumers have to come back and do an IOCTO system call, which is in the context of the thread in the process and tells you which uh, descriptor as an argument to the system call so that you, so that user space has to uh, help you a little instead of, because you really don't want uh, some automatic feature which injects new file descriptors. Imagine what happens if you have a code which does something like close zero dub and expects that it has just closed STD in, so the next dub will always use uh, the first and uh, available file descriptor because it just cleared that. And then even in a single threaded process, you would have uh, that a new class of race conditions. Yeah, yeah, true. So you even really if I can find a way to, to do it, I don't want to. Yeah, the only way I see is, or uh, if you want to be uh, a bit too clever, you could uh, maybe uh, use the open ed system call. <laughs> uh, no, the system call I was thinking that I would use for draining this would be uh, jail get. Some some sort of parameter to jail get that oh, if uh, you have jail get with file a... descriptor and the fact that I want a child from it, and then it'll get that jail and drain the queue. Okay. Um... Sure, you own the, that system call, you can extend it. Uh, yeah. My first idea was to use an Arctur. I, I could do that too, just on the uh, on the descriptor, yes. Because that's easier, because then you, because jail get is a fairly, you have to set up your uh, list and so on. With so the Arctur, control... you could just give it the jail descriptor and a flex integer if you for things like do you want it to be close and exact do you want it to be blocking non blocking do you want it to be owning non owning so that you can get basically set the initial flex atomically so you're thinking of this io control to actually get a descriptor generally or just as far as the child situation um Having an ioctal which could take oh well you need a the problem with an ioctal is you already need a file descriptor so you can't use oh, it to get true. your first shell descriptor. Um, and we don't want to create new situations where you have tools like uh, Beehive or the WireGuard command which fail if you have IPv4 disabled in the kernel because you uh, just wanted to um, create a socket only for to use a sock opt or I octal on it so that you need the file descriptor only as a way to invoke another system call on it which is in no way related to the file descriptor it's just that you need any file descriptor of that type that's not a good interface in my opinion um, okay, okay, so this this makes sense. Um, rather than yes, rather than trying to automatically create the descriptors, I I see where this is going, and I think I can work with this. Now, well, just a a general question on the uh, KQ thing right now, and more of a confirmation. So, what I've got with KQ events is right now uh, 
jail set, attach, uh, jail dying, and this child creation one and the uh, related things like that, like the like what the processes have with the track error and the track and the child and all that. Is there what do we else? get from jail set as return value when you use it to create a jail? Um, when you use it to create a jail, you would not get a notification for the jail set. A parent so, might get a notification for the jail creation. So someone, sorry, I was thinking in general about the interface. So if you use jail attach, uh, with the jail create flag, uh, you get as return value either minus one or the jail ID, correct? If I use jail attach? No, not jail attach, jail uh, set. Jail set, okay. If I use, yeah, if I use jail set, right, I, yeah, I either get a, a minus one or the JID. So the problem is we don't have enough bits to just return that. And but if I understand correctly right now, um, okay, I just looked at the signature of jail set. The IO VAC does not suffer the constness issue, so it's uh, not a construct IO VAC or an IO VAC of uh, something. So it is right. would be possible to return the file descriptor. Oh, yeah, oh, that's how I do I'm, it. I'm, I'm already thinking if it would for, be uh, uh, better to um, to instead um, yeah, but having a, a new system call is also invasive. This, uh, yeah, yeah, I Something think it's less like... invasive to extend the jail set system call than to say jail set system call that returns an FD instead a JD instead of a JID. And uh, I did add system calls I mean, to use it's invasive, JID. but it's, in my opinion, cleaner to have the jail set F, D, or something. But, yeah. or really, a system called jail open. That would probably be the correct one. Jail open and then jail set F, D, and get F, D, which expect the jail descriptor already. Yeah, well, the jail That's... open is also just an extension of jail get, where you can get a jail ID. Of course, if you know, if no, you want to, no, no, create... jail ID, jail open finish. would be sorry. I'm I'm sorry, jail descriptor, not jail, not jail ID. You can get a jail descriptor from jail get. Yep. I oh, know, but uh, the jail open would be a way to atomically create a jail with a given configuration. And we get as return value the uh, jail descriptor for it. Oh, so it's a full jail set. Yes, it would be a full jail set, and it would basically be a special form. And then you would have jail get FD and set FD, which uh, require you to already have the jail descriptor so for things so like modify, destroying, and. Uh, updating parameters or getting things like the jail ID for your descriptor so that you could then use uh, j jail get FD to get the jail ID if you want to print it to the user, for example. So instead of the uh, descriptor being a parameter that is passed to jail get or jail set, you just have a version of jail get or jail set that separately passes Let the descriptor type that as out, a... Maybe. As uh, a system so, call argument. Let me type that out. It's just. I wouldn't want to call it jail open. I don't like the idea of uh, a completely different name. It's uh, to me, that's confusing when it's functionally the same as jail set, except for the fact that it passes a descriptor or that it returns a descriptor. Something like that? Yeah, I, I could see that if I was, you know, doing jails from the ground up, yes. But since I already have a jail set system call with flags that include create and you create jails via jail set, I 
I, I would like to keep kind of with that paradigm, even if I am going to add system calls. You know, right now, for example, jail get, you know, you can get a jail right now by passing the name or by passing the JID. And those are the same system call because those are both parameters. So mm -hmm. I, I kind of like sticking with the idea that I've already set of a parameter being something that you can pass to identify the jail. There's already different ways of doing multiple parameters. This is just another parameter. You can say, oh, what I'll also pass if the description. conflicts? Like if I specify a jail ID, a uh, jail descriptor, and a name, and the reference the same or different jail, what happens then? There is an ordering. So there's a priority scheme. Uh, yes. File descriptor ID name or? Yeah, right now. Yes. And right now there is already a uh, priority ordering of JID and name. That's not an error. That's not an error. Okay. Um, actually, there's also when you um when you call jail get you can pass an invalid minus one jid and then it'll look for the name and it'll and it can return the jid based on the name or mm -hmm. if you pass you know a, a jid that if you pass an existing jid it'll expect it to be something and yes i suppose i could make it an error if you pass a valid descriptor and a valid jid and we reference different jails, so if... right, exactly. I, you know, that that could be uh, as you know, returned as an error as an indeterminate specification of jail. Or I could just say first I look for the JID, then I look for, yeah. and first I look for a descriptor, then I look for an ID. If you pass a if you pass a valid descriptor, either to jail get or jail set. It always assumes that that descriptor is the existing jail you want to work on, because Makes you cannot. Makes total sense. You could, and if you pass a negative one, then it assumes, oh, you want to be given a descriptor. And in um, jail set, the descriptor is special in that there are only two parameters that ever get returned from jail set: the error code, which is always a return only parameter, and mm -hmm. the descriptor, which could be. Input could be output, depending on whether it was a valid value at the beginning. Because that, that is how I was considering that jail set could be used to create a jail and return a descriptor. But also, you want to be able to set a jail based on its descriptor. Rather than add different system calls with different names for that, I just went with the convention of, is the descriptor valid at the beginning? Mm-hmm. So it's just that as a C programmer, I would like to um, see that the JavaScript interface is busy, hard to accidentally misuse, and does not require too much dynamic, busy building up type level value kind of messages and passing them back and forth. Well, the entire jail getting set system calls require setting up yep. name value lists. That's how the system calls are. I know. Created. And you have the problem with the dynamic typing of the values. That's you the do. Key to, to find which uh, type you are. And you uh, have kind of either have to uh, infer it from the CCTLs or. Uh, just hard coded, if I understand correctly. Yeah. And that works. It's just, it's a bit clunky to use, but very flexible. So there are but, yeah, advantages. Well, I needed the flexible because, yes, you don't know what kind, of, you know, when something new gets added to a jail, you know, I was trying to avoid the jail, jail version one, jail version two structures Ooh. that you pass. Yes, and and I owe that here is exactly the same the right thing, but in my mind, a descriptor is something special which deserves to be kind of out of band. 
maybe that's too much networking uh, assumptions. <laughs> of course, there's are system calls to your local kernel, not messages to some other system. You can do it. Okay. But well, it's really important, I think, that you update the documentation on so that it's very clear when you there's even the slightest possibility of you getting a descriptor back and that you document whether you let's say do you have to set the descriptor to minus one or will the kernel do that for you if jail creation fails so that you really know the exact API contract here or so whether do you have to invalidate the and put a minus one in the descriptor if you want it uh, to be copied out, or can you leave the integer uh, value uh, uninitialized in yeah. infer from the you, return value? Yeah, it, it in both jail set and jail get it would be uh, it it would be clear that if you want to have a descriptor returned to you, you put mm -hmm. negative one. If you want to say I am using the jail described by this descriptor, then you give it a valid value. Because if the API documentation does not intentionally st uh, explicitly stated, I would worry that there are no ugly corner cases hidden in the implementation things like, yes, I've created a jail for you, but I failed to give you the descriptor for it because your file descriptor table is full. So the jail exists, but you won't get the file descriptor. Um, nope, actually, right now, the code, because that's code I've already written, the code path there okay. is the jail creation fails. Yes, because you create with descriptor first. Yes. And that's the right way to do it. But as someone who wants to defensively program against the API, you have to know that. And it's nowhere documented. It's just an implementation detail right now, something which is not explicitly part of the uh, committed to a API. So you're kind of forced to assume that it could change. Um, I suppose, but Unless then, you you know, one it. could say that with a jail create FD, you could also say, well, if I would, if it returned a negative one because it couldn't create a descriptor, how do I know if the jail was created or not? It's the same question. Exactly, you have to document it. Well, yes, I, I will be documenting that. That's okay. all. It's not, it's okay. half yeah. a sentence in the main page is enough. <laughs> yep. It's just that the, within like a, within, uh, let's say, with an offensive hacker mindset, those are the kind of things. How could this break? Not how could this work, but how could this fail? Yeah, well, and the various ways that jail set could fail when creating a jail, all of them have the same result. The jail is not created. With some of the modules, it might be that the jail is created and then removed before the system call exits. But either way, when the system call exits, there is no jail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the important part. That To me, is that you know this. So I would love to see it in such a way that it's possible with jail descriptors to manage jails so that the resource leaks are uh, basically, even if I say kill stuff, there are no resource leaks. So that yeah. the kernel will clean up. Yep, that makes sense. Because right now it's really annoying if you uh, have something stuck even if it's your own code and you are a bit too aggressive, uh, you can have in states which are annoying and hard to recover. Whereas if we could get to a state that you just close the file descriptor or kill the process and thereby implicitly close the file descriptor and the kernel will just tear everything down. The kernel part of, of course, only I'm not expecting the kernel to magically start hooks. Uh, uh, yes, uh, there there will still be that problem. So we we don't want to manage things by killing processes. Yeah, but yes, but if the process yes and no. Uh, would be, not that exist. was why I wanted the observational descriptors so that you yeah. can still get an event on destruction and do things like cleanup. Mm -hmm. Take a lock 
on the jail name somewhere in Viran. While holding the lock, do the cleanup. And you can have an asynchronous, but still raise free cleanup. Yeah. At least it's in my um, um, magic fairyland. <laughs> yep. Well, okay. Yeah, this this makes sense. I'm going to have to look into the uh, idea of level triggered instead of edge triggered KQ stuff. That's kind of new to me, but uh, I, uh, I see where edge trigger is in. really really fragile to use. Edge triggered is. Edge triggered is. Oh. That's the only one that really makes ever, intuitive sense to me. An edge triggered interface means that, uh, let's say you consume the event, and while that happens, something else happens, you're not going to get the notification. If you don't handle the event, you get it again. And that's the default uh, for almost every US level. Don't if there is a black you can set uh, or receive or something you now um and that basically throws on the um uh, uh the yes one shot is used to uh, an event clears itself But by default, it should be level triggered. So if, if I will get an event telling me the jail I want to um, subscribe to has uh, a child jail, uh, and I don't drain the child jail, I just the next KQ, I get the same event again. That's the reliable and easy to program again. Yes, that makes sense for the child jail because there is an action you need to take that it needs to track. Yeah. But for things like, you know, the jail has been set, I'm not sure what there is to consume. And if there's nothing to consume, I don't see Sorry. what how the level no, 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 for, versus edge would work. A new event. Oh, you. Uh, the jail I'm subscribing to has been recon. Kind of, Jan, your audio is cutting out. Have it seems. To be cleared. Maybe it's only for me. Sorry. No, it's. Yes. I'm, I'm getting cut out too. Yeah. Yeah. So Jan, your your audio cuts out as if you're on a weak connection or something. Are you torrenting? Uh, or tormenting? Shouldn't be, but hey, let me check. <laughs> okay. <laughs> check your traffic rest. Test. Yeah, that's lovely. Let me just rejoin. Uh, Vinay, how do I pronounce your name? And I apologize if I just mispronounced it. Okay, so uh, good. No, no, how are you? It's pronounced Vinay. How do I? Ah, uh, Vinay. Vinay. Uh -huh. Welcome. Uh, uh, we'll Vinay. let Jan rejoin. And uh, it sounds like Jamie, you've you've got some ideas to work with. Yeah, that's plenty at this time. Yep. Cool. Excellent. So Jan is back. Welcome back, Jan. He's connecting. Uh, Vinay, how did you hear about this? Previous uh, or this uh, uh, this uh, class webinar? Okay. And where are you based? Hello. Uh, I am from uh, India. Welcome. Uh, so Jan. Well, you're muted, but let's uh, shift briefly to Vinay. Um, so go ahead and introduce yourself and what you're after regarding a CVE. So I am uh, Vinay. I am from uh, Chennai, Tamil Nadu, India. Uh, so my uh, professor gave me a project on FreeBSD. So I came to know about the FreeBSD. Before that, I didn't know. I work upon a little bit Linux. I am a student also. I'm studying in college itself. So the project is was that I want to demonstrate a non-FreeBSD CV 
So I am stuck there. Well, uh, yeah, the, apparently the recent SSH CVE did not apply to it. Um, I guess, Jan, you tend to track these topics. Uh, can you think of any CVEs that are, I, in it, I guess you want an open existing one or, or something that's Hmm. resolved and you want to go back through its steps? No. I tried uh, the two CV, which is there is one CV in name is two zero two zero two five five eight four. I tried to install that version also, which is affected by that uh, CV. But in that, I able to create the jails, but there is something mounting and unmounting in jail. I am not able to do that. Uh, do you have a link to that CVE? And for what it's worth, Uh is there a CVE tracker that specific that we can do a jail -huh. keyword Uh search on? -huh. I, I have that link with Great. oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, always have your links ready. That's one simple Uh -huh. advisory. I sent one link. Oh, thank you. Uh, so this is one you looked at, and is it currently open? We will see in a few seconds here. No, it is closed. It's It closed. is patched. Okay. But can I able to demonstrate uh, by installing the older version of previously? Mm -hmm. Okay, and These you have another two words. one here. Uh, These two I am looking upon. You're looking at this one too. Uh, Yeah, so it, okay. for your purposes, it's okay if it's closed, correct? Mm -hmm. It's, uh, so uh, what uh, course are you taking? Hello? Yeah, what Hello? what's your college course level or what, CS two or something? No, no, no. Leslie, <laughs> are we doing Oh, your homework? oh first. <laughs> no, no, no. No, 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 just I am stuck. I am trying to do from two or three weeks. I just now know about the free PhD. It is like Linux, but many functions are different from Linux, like desktop environment like that. I just uh, learn how to install desktop environment like that and how to manage the cells and like that. I graduated in electrical engineering, but now I am doing an internship in cybersecurity. Cool. Um, let's see, Jamie, for what it's worth, are you aware of any CVEs that are recent or somewhat active? Uh, not I don't CVEs. think we want to turn this into a weaponization tutorial. No, but hey, it, it, they're No, facts. no, no. I, <laughs> not CVEs, I don't. but I'm aware of a bug that is that that one with um, with no Uh, FS mounts. Yep, Correct. that's the one I was thinking about that should get a CVE, but hasn't yet. And Yeah. it's a really gnarly one. Um, but um, so you could turn it into a CVE by submitting it and you could even have a proof of concept because all you need to do is uh, already spelled out in the bug reports. Um, it's just not Here we go. Two six two one eight zero. That's the Yeah. uh, previous debug. So, and this is, I think, the FreeBSD secu um, uh, security report for the CVE you mentioned. Is that for one? Uh, Uh, that's Does that been look around right? for two years, maybe. Yeah, And it's not new. it it so um Ah. There's also a one seven nine there are two that related ones. yeah. Uh, this is the one I was thinking about. I'll collect all these and. Uh, when it rains, it pours. One, seven, nine, right before it. And 
Jail escapes. Boom. Okay. So, I, the issue in the one I just linked to is the following. If you have uh, two jails and they just run normally, the kernel knows how to enforce that a jail can't do a CD dot dot to go into the, uh, to have a file system escape and go into the host file system. Of course, that even change root does that. The problem is what happens if you have two jails and they have a Unix socket uh, connection between each other. Then because they're Unix sockets, they can uh, use those to pass file descriptors. So a jail can pass, a, right now at least, a directory file uh, descriptor from its uh, file system namespace to the other jail's file system namespace. And then the second jail, which received the file descriptor, can use that directory uh, descriptor to go down, 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 and down. And unless if I understand the code correctly, unless it happens to have the other jails um, root directory in common on that path, which normally doesn't happen unless it's between a parent and child jail, um, it never hits the uh, the V node for the directory of the uh, of the jail's root, so it's never prevented from using dot dot. So it can basically go anywhere in the file system with super user privileges if it's root in the receiving jail. So you have That's full file true. system escape. But then you would think that if you were able to pass a file descriptor between those, they must have at some point been had access to a Unix domain socket or socket pair. Yes and, and for no. them to both have access to the same one, they would already have to have had either some common file system or so, let him finish some uh, cooperation from a higher level jail higher level process that wants them to uh, not be there. Uh, well, yes, but that higher level process may want to jail both of these jails. Oh yes, I see. Them... It could escape. What can happen jail. is the following. I think it's realistic to encounter that if you have two jails. Let's say you have your uh, jail to run the PHP crap, which uh, runs half the internet, and then you have your Postgres database or MySQL database. And you don't want to expose your database to an IP socket at all. Instead, you bind your database to a Unix socket, and then NullFS mount the directory into the other jail. Uh, in that case, um, if you own the processes on the process, you suddenly can turn, I have compromised two jails uh, into I've compromised the host. Okay. Because okay, if I yes, have... that, that makes sense. And the other case is uh, where you no know file system has to be involved by uh, just having a mount flag to uh, prevent basically uh, file descriptor passing or even Unix sockets connection on LFS does not work uh, to totally make this code uh, unreachable is because you can use uh, the socket pair system call to create a pair of already connected Unix sockets without ever going through the file system. And then give okay. one half of the socket pair to each jail uh, if you have a parent. And yep. then, even if uh, uh, potentially, I haven't checked, but I'm afraid that may even work if you're a jail able to create child jails, because while both of these jails are restricted to your jail directory on creation, the restriction applied to the file descriptor is against a restrictive, a uh, respective. Uh, jail root of each of the child jails. So because the comparison is with the uh, directory I know I'm not allowed to leave does not trigger because the descriptor created in one child jail would be limited to that child jail's uh, root directory and not to the parent uh, root directory. Because I haven't found any 
list pointers to build a stack of them. So it looks like only the top level jail is uh, enforced, which makes sense because that's the file system wouldn't allow that normally, but because now you can kind of treat the file system more like a graph instead of an acyclic graph, suddenly you can do such uh, oh. insanity. Vinay, do you have any okay. questions while we go deep, deep, deep into these topics? So, uh, little bit, I am understanding. And the, in second, uh, the CVI uh, sent now. What is it? that CV? It is like some, uh, we can add some PID to some jails with p trace like that something is there i am not understanding that sorry i did not understand your question <laughs> adding maybe um, my connection uh, sorry sir uh, sorry oh. in second uh, second cv na 2020 uh, yeah. in that uh, something is uh, p trace is there so it is uh, like uh, we can attach uh, some okay. pid to p trace so it can uh, able to access the outside the jail file directory also Hmm. Oh, uh, yeah, that would be hard to exploit because if I understand correctly, uh, the base system jail command um, does the operations in such an order that you will never observe it in that state to attack it. Okay. Right, so, it does that while the jail is locked. Yeah, so oh. the jail command, I think, will enter the jail root directory before it does the jail attach. So it does an FC, uh, CD or a change deer or F change deer before it ever attaches to itself to the jail. So you would not be able to observe it with a current working directory from outside the jail. You can see it. I believe like the other uh, CVE we saw, that is something that was fixed up a few years ago that that used to be a problem yeah but the jail command already did it in such a way that if you entered a jail through the jail command as uh, jx command sorry uh, it was not exploitable but it if was, you use the system so calls according to the documentation mm -hmm. you could get into that exploitable state yes that that's true it was fixed at the system call level more recently it, okay, okay. it's uh, so you would have to basically introduce an additional bug into JXEC uh, or jail um, hook execution so that the jail or the JXEC command behave in such a way that they are so buggy that this becomes exploitable. Oh. And other than jail, what's uh, CV I can take so it is easy for me? Can you a little bit? Guide me on that. No, I don't know of any other CVEs. Well, I am going to have to uh, bow out. No, I'm I'm sorry, but I've got some things that need doing. Understood. Well, Jamie, I I'm glad you have some food for thought on approaches to jail descriptors. Yes, yeah, it's just been so, useful. Um, okay. Uh, well, take care. Uh, Catch um, you next time. And yes, Jan, maybe you've got some more ideas. So yeah, you can use the. Uh, CVE details has a query function where you can use it to search uh, by um, by a signer, and that's uh, and then you could go by a CVE score, uh -huh. and you get a query like this, and then you restrict the range of the date range to uh, find the newer ones because I don't think you. So here, yeah. Oh, the really bad ones are in ancient versions, but hey, um, here's a really bad one, supposedly. Okay, thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Michael. So, Jan, you have one more link coming? Yeah. Okay, so there's one more so coming. So if you Just do that, uh, the last link I posted sorts them by, uh, by score. Max yep. Okay. Uh, basically by a guesstimated impact. Hmm. And then there are two from 2020. 
fairly close to the top. So if they're supposedly so bad, they should be uh, quite easy to exploit. And then you should find a link in there uh, except, uh, with the um, original um, vendor um, and third party advisories from FreeBSD and NetApp in one case. And in the other case, also from FreeBSD and NetApp. One is in the route advertisement solidification daemon. But that requires you to, uh, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, well, I hope that sets you in the right direction. Those are so the RT Soldi one. You would have to go into FreeBSD back to FreeBSD eleven dot four release to get it really juicy exploit before <laughs> or twelve dot one because in twelve dot two and newer it's already in a capsicum sandbox. So you uh, would be fairly limited in what you could do from inside that sandbox. Okay. Uh, this one RT sold now. Yeah, that's the one. But it would you would have to target a FreeBSD twelve dot one or older. Um. Well, good luck with that. Do report back. I think the artists, both of them are artists all you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Okay, cool. Um, that said, uh, Dan, are you available to talk SNMP ever so briefly? Yes. Awesome. So, uh, unless that, someone else has another jail topic of, of the hour, and this could be jail related. <clears throat> so, in a a an effort of uh, self harm, I spent the weekend with FreeBSD's built in B S N M P, and uh, let's do a quick search here. D V L. So, in my research, and this is a rather under documented topic i found okay there's another one uh thank you for posting another link i'll throw it in the doc just one sec why not uh boom so uh for the official documentation that's touched on ever so briefly in the Lucas book, there was a Lucas article, perhaps in the very first BSD magazine. And Dan, it looks like you have done some SNMP tinkering, hacking, you name it. Uh, first question, is that entirely with net SNMP or do you ever use FreeBSD's built-in SNMP? No, I only use net SNMPD and okay. I can't remember why. There is some reason way back when. Okay. And can you give just off the cuff a list of your favorite uses of or most valuable uses of SNMP in your ecosystem? Yeah. Let me let me look. Um, generally, I pull everything out of SNMP with Libra NMS. Okay. And then it maps the things. And I'm just going to go in here and have a look at my groups, groups, man. No, where device groups. Here we go. No, it's not, not device groups. Somewhere in here, device manage groups. No, that's not useful. Okay. I go under apps. So I manage Apache, Bind, DHCP, Fail to Ban, MySQL, Nginx, NTP clients, PHP, FPM, Postfix, 
PostgreSQL, Smart, and ZFS. Those are the extends that I run on various hosts and jails. Um, and it pulls it all in rather nicely and graphs it. Ah, uh, is that something you have explicitly blogged about in your prolific blog or blogs? Search for extends. Ex ah, thank you. Let's see. So if I do a back. It'll be in the first. Yeah. Look under scripts on that for running as non root Look down for scripts. I hope first I did it extends, da, 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 and then scripts is probably. Take the first URL. Take the first URL on your oh, page this, right now. This one. Yeah. And then in there, search for scripts. Hello. There you okay. Go. Cool. So those are the extends. Ah. And I put them in that location. And those are scripts pulled down from Libra NMS SNMP agent, something like that. They're not available as a port, but maybe we should start putting them into a port. And I, some of them cache and some of them don't cache. Some of them have cron jobs, so they're not, not invoked by SNMP D itself because sometimes they take a little while to run. Cool. Ah, so I saw smart up there. And are those maintained by the Libre NMS project or by Net SNMP or someone else entirely? By Libre and NMS. Oh, I probably said that wrong. Um, <clears throat> and some of them have Linuxisms in them, and I've corrected them and put them into my local repo. Now let me see if I've made them available. Oh yeah, go to get.langel.org. Here, why don't I just copy in the, into the uh, chat? Yeah, please, thank you. <laughs> Vinay, you're welcome. Uh, let's see. There you go. Oh, well, yeah, beautiful. I, even just reading the path is encouraging. So all they should right. all just work. They okay. should just work out of the box now on FreeBSD. Now, they're, they're four years old. I might have newer versions of them. So if you find that something isn't working, then tell me, and I'll start. I'll, I'll create a free VSD package. Okay. That which is what said, I really should be doing. Oh, so do they generally break over time or do they get extended over time or both? If they're they get years. updated and sometimes they break. Okay. Um, but do you see them sprouting it, new features? Uh, no, not so much. But Got it. Say it's written with an old version of Python in mind. Okay, and perfect. It breaks on newer versions of Python or Perl or something like that, or et cetera. Beautiful. I will take a look and see how that might relate. It was quite the adventure to untangle the elusive facts surrounding the SBSNMP project, such as where to find it upstream, which happens to be seemingly a a home directory of the author and that's that oh, where you'll find a newer fresh version ports, fresh ports net snmpd oh so it used to be in ports long long ago and it went into base under contrib which is a good thing but did it uh, then what am i using you're using probably net snmpd this is a native freebsd one or Oh, is that where you? I see. I see. Yeah, there was I, a re, I, I think it because it didn't do version three. That could be. I think it's. Yeah. And it looks like Net SNMP has just recently left the porch tree. Oh. No, no, no! I'm looking at the wrong. Okay. I'm looking at the wrong. I better log in first and and check. Package info minus o. Net SNMP. 
net management. I'm in the wrong director. I was looking at net, net SNMP. That was a disturbing feeling. (laughs) Um, There's been a lot of, oh, okay. So you're trying to get the base net SNMP SNMP working. Uh, It is working. It's imported into base, but it's not part of, it's not part of base, but it's imported into base as a contrib. It's a, it is a contrib, and there is a useful package, and the package may have a bug, but the author was responsive on Saturday but hasn't responded to my debugging at the very bottom, which is like, hey, um, it's not round-tripping on the translations. Like, oh, the package includes the UC Davis. And if you're wondering, UCD is UC Davis, and you'll find that everywhere. Um it can work with the numeric values, but it can't work with the more human readable name, which will be a lot more useful when say adding custom little hooks and stuff, but I can mm-hmm. install the package, add little custom scripts and it does stuff, <laughs> which is kind of oh, cool. Good. But uh, oh, it good. was it was like, uh, I don't have a good metaphor, but something involving closet skeletons and dust and darkness. And most things you'll find are like, 10 to 15 years old, but it all works. So it's it's kind of what, surreal. What was your incentive for using this one? Uh, so the incentive was derived from the last jail call where I think Rod was helping Entrenig do some network debugging. And uh, when you debug a network interface, nine times out of 10, you are connecting to another interface in some way with like a wire or a fiber connection between them. And so in those situations, which for me is like uh, WAN replication to a open sense router to a FreeBSD ZFS host to home, which has also a FreeBSD router, et cetera, et cetera. There are four primary systems I have control over and one needs to know facts about them relating to their networking such that uh, if you need to tinker with as Rod was explaining the congestion window, et cetera, et cetera. Uh oh, Jan, do you have a sarcastic comment here? Let's see. Um, let's see what you've got. Uh, I will just raw post this and pray it's safe for work. Okay. Um oh goodness. Ethernet um, over infrared. Ooh, okay. Cool. Uh, can you cook with it is a question. Um so that said, uh right or wrong SNMP came popped into my head. It's a tool I've never used in my entire life, to my knowledge. And I thought, okay, so if we just need to know things like, I don't know, MTU hypothetically on a device, maybe a bad example, but could it advertise such things? And one visceral story that is motivating this was working with a client for a few hours to diagnose the fact that a very high-end I don't know, 40 gig network card would never perform very quickly. It was perfectly configured in every regard, but it was still really slow. Well, it was an X8 eight lane PCI card plugged into an X4 slot, which was nice and long. Um... And the vendors could give you a lovely X16 huge PCIe slot and it's electrically one lane and it's not like color coded to show the lanes or anything. And so these things matter. So I have this twisted idea in the back of my head that what if some of this essential stuff was just advertised, even if super private, uh, that's exactly it. Uh, PCI conf LVC, which gives you the, uh, the link, the current, uh, PCI, interface lanes and the supported and that's the critical information and uh, it's not a secret i mean to make that a visible over snmp would not be difficult and yes it's deep in the weeds from some perspectives but then looking at the built-in one they extended for free bsd such that there is like net graph pf uh the standard ones like the standard MIBs, it's like a SNM PV2 or whatever, and then the UCD ones, UC Davis. So uh, I felt that I should just start documenting or else I will forget everything in an instant. So here are like 17 pages of 
stuff relating to BS and MP. I'll put that in the chat. Anyway, so I have some really bright red questions in there, such as, is the little port broken? Because um, I think it appears to me to be broken and not really installing or referencing the UCD MIB. And here are the reference bits I found. Uh, you definitely popped into that list, Dan. And the foundation improved it way, way, way back in 2010. And I think that's where the BSNMP uh, walk command came. And there's some GSOC projects. So there is a chance that one of those was V3 support. So I only now know how to vaguely uh, ask vaguely informed questions about all this because, yeah, I, I yeah, <laughs> it's new to me. And there are mysteries like if it's version 1.13 in base, yet his private directory has 1.5, are there differences? I don't know. Mysteries, mysteries everywhere. And of course, there's the ILMI. NGATM, which I guess is an interface for ATM, the sort of carrier grade contraptions. And uh, I found a few links, but nothing super helpful there. And like RFCs related to their management and yikes. Anyway, uh, Dan, that is invaluable because you've shown like what can be done and what people are doing in the real world. And heaven forbid, I have questions for you. So I appreciate that entrepreneur is no not around, uh, but he successfully moved a base install into package base and has some some uh, tricks he learned along the way. And in my journeys on all this, I found this little tool that you might find interesting or you might not find interesting. Oh. It is a simple uh, throughput calculator, which based on everything, again, last week's call with everyone diagnosing ah, things so, like all that. Go ahead, Jan. In my opinion, the uh, safest way to do the conversion from uh, two package base is to create a boot environment, attach it as a jail with BECTL jail, and then do the changes in, in the jail and clean up. Um, and the easiest way to clean up, in my opinion, is to, uh, before you do the package base, you git um, in it, git add the slash etc directory. Mm -hmm. You install all the packages you want. Afterwards, the system is a mess. So you uh, delete all the package save files uh, in the jail. And then you just do a git restore hard. Hmm. Cool. And um, if you don't want to keep it, you can delete with a git directory when you're done. And then you say BECTL uh, activate dash T uh, your uh, package space environment, reboot into it. If everything is to your liking, you can then BECTL activate it permanently. Oh, so that's temporary? Oh, I like that. Okay. Uh, that's a boot once flag you said there. Then. Lovely. Um, that said, are you using uh, Etsy Merge? What was John Baldwin's tool to replace Merge Master? DC Update. Hey, thank you. Are you using that in any way? Yes, that's my uh, traditional way to update my uh, user lens slash etc. Cool. Uh, the one thing you have to watch out for with uh, etc update is that you have to extract uh, once with the old sources. So that you have the old and the new to do a free way merge with the current configuration. Oh, okay. If you don't do that, uh, it will not work as you want it because it will effectively do a free way merge against the empty because missing file, and then everything will be lots of this, and nothing makes sense. Okay. And it's even more annoying when merge master. Um, <laughs> Impressive. Okay. But that's if you don't read the man page before you run it as root. So you do a etc update extract, 
Mm-hmm. Then you update your sources, then you compile or do whatever else, release the update or something, to update your user line. And once you've installed, let's say, install uh, kernel install world, then you can, depending on how closely you intend to follow the required steps, uh, or if you want to play it fast and loose, in the latter case, you just uh, run etc update now. Ooh, without rebooting, um, which works in almost all cases. Okay. And yeah, potentially if you had, if the new user lands basic commands like grab z and so on couldn't run on the old kernel, then it would explode. But uh, that's fairly uncommon, but it has happened once mm-hmm. or twice over the years. But oh. for most up, it's reproducible as in, an update between a pair of versions either works with the shortcut or not, but it's not because it's guaranteed to work. It's in that case just that because it happens to work. Yeah. Is FreeBSD update using that under the hood? What? Uh, Etsy update? Sorry, is it is the update using what under the hood? Is FreeBSD update? the Collins updater. I don't think so. I think it has its own... Uh, has its own thing, okay. Because it's older than ETC update. Got it. Uh, and it compares... Michael, are you the... talking about upgrading a jail or the host? Uh, the host and potentially a jail. Okay. Look at the make jail script. GitHub.com, make jail, make jail. NK jail. It, it does that. Uh, Etsy update and all that stuff. If you're interested to see how it does it, right. that's what I use to upgrade gels. Written by Mark Felder. Oh yeah, cool. What's he up to? It's a name I haven't heard in the last year or two. I don't know. I would love to know. Cool. Um, well, great. Uh, boom. Uh, nice I see you've contributed to it as well. Yep. 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 Heavy use here. It's what I use for maintaining jails because I don't, I want to keep using jail.comp type stuff, but I don't want to manually issue a lot of big commands. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think it's, I should provide something like that uh, for my kind of jail management. Because everything is in jail.com right now, and if it goes somewhere in libxec or in a few helper commands, it would be quite useful. Because my jail.com is uh, basically a, a jail manager in uh, double quotes right now. Ooh, upgrade. I wonder what that does. That's the update. Ooh. Resolve. F. Boom. OK. <laughs> Thank you. That is a great example, and I will just drop that in. Uh... Okay. Anything else, you two? Uh, Dan, you don't happen to have any experience um, using uh, auto TTY master interfaces? Um, to kind of make programs think they're still running in the foreground and so that they do grab colorful output and so on instead of uh, a pipe. I didn't hear the first bit of what you're asking. What so, uh, um, do you have a link? Exactly. I, I'm thinking about writing a little C command which instead of using pipes to run the child process uses a PTY, so a new pseudo terminal, and then just forward that to its controlling terminal uh, so that it can decorate the output. But the um, application running inside of it still thinks it's writing to a TTY. No, I don't think I've used that. Uh, yeah. OK. Uh, because POSIX being POSIX is just a uh, Annoying if you don't already know what to uh, look for. Is it auto TTY or PTY? 
with a T or a P? P, -P, -Y. P as in Peter? Yes. Okay. Ah, Peter. Cool. Okay. Uh, that is plenty of food for thought spread around for everyone to digest over the next week. Thank you so much for uh, Jan helping out Jamie with some ideas on the jail descriptors. And thank you, Dan, for all the pointers on S and MP. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. We'll take care of you too. Help it helps. Thank you. Well, all right. See y'all later. Bye. Bye.